I'm sorry to have to be the one to tell you this, but if you're an entry level RTX 40 series user, RX 7000 series user, or you got excited by the idea that your older GPU, which is struggling to get anywhere near 60 FPS in the latest AAA games, is going to be saved by DLSS 3 frame generation, or FSR 3 fluid motion frames. Well, they're not. And frankly, those technologies were never meant for you. They were designed for the RTX 4090, 4080, and 7900 XTX user who has a 160 to 240 hertz refresh high resolution monitor that despite having the biggest and baddest GPUs out there will never hit that 240 hertz refresh rate in anything but an esports title. And getting only half of their monitor's refresh rate of 120 hertz has frustrated them to no end. But luckily, the gaming gods have come down and descended upon the most expensive and most extreme gaming machines a solution to their most grievous of issues. Hold up, there's no way that can be true. I distinctly remember seeing in video marketing that showed I could take a game from the dregs of unplayability all the way up to great frame rates. Have you ever noticed how none of those DLSS3 numbers are right around 60 FPS? Well, that's because Nvidia's minimum recommended frame rate before even turning on DLSS3 is 60 FPS. And the same goes for FSR3 fluid motion frames. AMD came out saying that 60 FPS was the minimum required frame rate for turning it on, then graciously reduced that down to 55 FPS. So all these sub 30 FPS tiles you see being rescued by DLSS3 or FSR3 are actually being saved first by DLSS2 and FSR2 using performance or even ultra performance mode to get their frame rate up to 60 FPS, which to be fair, is the goal for most mid-range to low-end gamers in the first place. Yeah, but that 60 FPS requirement is just because of latency. If I'm playing a single player game and I don't care about latency, then I'll just be getting those extra FPS. And I'll be like, I have a card that can do 60 FPS native. Having your reactions process at 15 FPS when you're seeing 60 FPS gameplay is a level of latency almost any gamer would feel. Just think of how bad it feels just pressing an interface button and it doesn't immediately react to your click. Now translate that to trying to shoot a moving target and eh. stop. I know what you're gonna say, but both Nvidia and AMD have technologies built into DLSS3 and FSR3 that reduce latency and make it even better than native gameplay. That's just more confusion caused by Nvidia's deceptive marketing. And AMD would be doing the same thing if they had the marketing budget for it. But both of those technologies are completely separate from FSR3 and DLSS3 and should be used by you anyways. Oh, but it's 60 FPS. That's more visual information. It's gonna look better when I'm playing it. Here we get into how frame generation works and how frame generated from a 30 FPS source will not be as good as ones generated from a 120 FPS source. If we look at this NVIDIA flowchart of how the frame gen works, we see the original frame is generated. Motion vectors for a few elements are taken from the game engine. Then DLSS2 happens. The frame upscales it to the desired resolution. It waits until a second frame is generated and upscales it. Then it analyzes the difference between the two frames, and it makes its own motion vectors, assuming what is happening between the frames, then generates that intermediate frame, and inserts it between the two others. That just explains how it works, not how 120 FPS frames are better than 30 FPS frames. That is where the sequential frames become so important. The more frames you have, the smaller the change between each frame is, so when the optical flow accelerator has to guess at what is happening, it has to make far fewer guesses between frames and can make more accurate image with less artifacting. This is especially true when objects are obscured by other objects in the frame and come fully into being out of nowhere as far as the optical flow generator is concerned. So sadly, the users who need frame generation the most, even if they don't care about the latency penalty, are going to be most affected by the visual shortcomings of this technology. Not only are their frames going to be less accurate than their high refresh rate brethren, they're going to be on screen longer, making those inaccuracies more visible. And if the frame rate drops too low, the whole process can just fall apart, giving some very garbled results. While those gamers with a 4090, 4080, or 7900 XT who are already getting great frame rates are going to be treated to hundreds of extra, mostly pristine luxury frames that, even if they do have artifacts, they can be easily ignored because they're on screen for 1 240th of a second. In these kind of situations, this technology can feel revolutionary, giving you unbelievable smoothness like you've never seen before. Well, that kind of sucks. Yeah, it does. So what are people who are struggling to play these games supposed to do? Well, the reality of this situation is there's no free lunch when it comes to getting better frame rate. Though, DLSS and FSR quality do get pretty close. True dat. You're gonna have to sacrifice visuals in some way, whether that's turning down settings, turning up upscaling, 
or both before you can even get to the point where you can consider turning on frame generation. And even that will slightly lower your visuals, but it will give you better perceived smoothness to all the animations. It really sucks when the maker of your brand new GPU tells you to render at one quarter of your monitor's native resolution and use frame generation just to get a decent frame rate in the latest AAA game. Yeah. The PC gaming industry is in a tough transition point right now, where games no longer need to support the PS4 or Xbox One. Now they can solely focus on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X and S. This means that the games are be targeting 16 gigabytes of RAM. They'll have access to technologies like FSR. If trends continue the way they have, the medium settings at 30 FPS maybe even with FSR on, is going to be the target for these consoles. So if you're even thinking about touching that ultra quality setting button, you need to have a system that can embarrass the modern consoles. It's a paradigm shift that PC gamers haven't had to deal with in a long time, and frankly too much hope is being put on these new technologies. While some are fantastic, like DLSS and FSR2 quality settings, or the DLAA or native AA from AMD, bring AA to a whole new level of detail. NVIDIA's frame generation and AMD's fluid motion frames are not the silver bullet that are going to solve all your problems. They can't save you from having to upgrade. Damn. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. Or if you think this average gamer hater is full of <laughs> get in the comments and let them know. Or maybe just subscribe. Or maybe just subscribe. I'm Scott. I'm not. And I'll see you next time, Ultimate fans.